Hi, we're talking about Psychology Radio again. It's your public broadcasting radio. We're doing learning, which is chapter number seven. Hi, I'm Bobo Baggins. No, I'm not actually. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I can't believe I just introduced myself with the wrong name. Yeah. I'm actually Bobo Doll, just reading off the card a little bit too specifically. I don't even know my own name. Yeah, you don't. And uh, you're Bobo Baggins. It is funny that our names are both Bobo. Yeah, I mean, we met each other on Facebook. Right, isn't that great? Yeah. And now we have this show. Yeah. Let's get started. Learning Chapter 7. Learning is based on experience. It produces changes in the organism. The changes are relatively permanent, and learning and memory are linked. Wow. Let's talk about habituation. What do you think, Bobo? Habituation. Well, uh, it's the process by which repeated or prolonged exposure to a stimulus results in a gradual reduction in responding. So that would be like you just moved in next door to a train station, and at first it really aggravates you, but after a while you start to get used to it, and you, your re responding reduces. Right, so then you're able to sleep there, and other people can't imagine, but you can do it because it's habituation. Thankfully, we have that. Excellent, excellent. And then we have uh, sanitization. Sensitization. Sensitization. That's a rough word. I don't even know how to say that right. Yeah, it's pretty rough. That's a presentation of a stimulus leading to increased response to a later stimulus. Like it primes you to be aware of something. Something that's happened before causes you to remember it later with a similar same stimulus. That's sensitization. Sensitization. Excellent. And then we have what is called implicit learning. Implicit this learning. This takes place largely independent of awareness. Yeah, we may not even be aware of how or when we learned it. It's implicit. What? Implicit. Wow. And there's behaviorism, which is concerned with measuring observable behaviors not particularly focused on mental activities. Just because you can't see what's happening in someone's mental activities, you can only observe what they're actually doing. Hmm. That would be a world if we could observe their minds, huh? Right? Someday. Wow. Someday. Someday. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are types of learning. We have classical conditioning, operant conditioning, mm -hmm. observational learning. That's right. Number one, the classical conditioning is when a neutral stimulus evokes a response after being paired with a stimulus that naturally evokes a response. Uh, this is uh, an exam question, obviously. It's unconditioned stimulus, which is something that produces a naturally occurring reaction like food with an unconditional response, which is a reflective reaction that is produced by an unconditional stimulation, like a salivation to a bell or something. Mm. I always salivate at a bell, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course you do <laughs> yeah. taco bell right oh of course yeah, yeah. that makes more sense yeah Con uh, a conditioned stimulus do you want to tell us about that oh yeah conditioned stimulus so it's where you get conditioner and you condition <laughs> no. your hair and it stimulates a stimulus <laughs> that is initially neutral but after Heart to snip. <laughs> so my handwriting is a little difficult to read. How about if I do that one? Okay. Condition stimulus is a stimulus to that. Uh oh, I can't even read it. Is initially neutral, but after pairing it with the unconditional stimulus, it produces a response, like the bell. So if I have a dog and I present him with food, it's a natural thing for him to salivate. But if I, when I present him with food, always pair that by ringing a bell, eventually he will start salivating when he hears the bell. This is kind of like the office where Jim gives Dwight a piece of gum every time, like the computer thing exactly. rings. Exactly. Yeah. It's a great episode. That's conditioned stimulus. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. There's conditioned response. I don't know if you can read my handwriting. Give it a try. I will give it a try. Reaction that resembles an unconditioned response, but is pro produced by conditioned stimulus. Yep. So we're still talking about salivation. Yeah, the stimulus is ringing of the bell. The response is the salivation in response to the bell. Mm. Then there's acquisition, which is the phase when the conditioned stimulus, the bell, and the unconditioned stimulus, the food, are presented together. Mm. And then we have extinction. Gradual elimination of a learned response that occurred when the conditioned stimulus, the bell, is presented but is not paired with the unconditioned stimulus, which is the food. We're ever learning. Spontaneous recovery is the tendency of a learned behavior to recover from extinction after a rest period. Hmm. And then so somebody rings a bell 100 years later, and you're like, oh, 
now I'm ready for food, even though that's not really what's going on. Oh, I forgot to eat for the 100 years. Right. Where's the bell? Generalization. The CR. Which is conditioned response. Conditioned response is observed even though the condition on conditioned stimulus is slightly different from the conditioned stimulus stimulus used during acquisition. Right. Like if someone uses a very fine bell, like ding, 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 and then someone else does like a school bell, it's, they're similar. So sometimes that can be put together in a generalization. Mm. Let's learn about John Watson and little Albert. They wanted to talk about classical conditioning examples. They said, take a nine-month-old. Albert learned to be afraid of a rat after it was paired with a loud noise, which I think personally was a rude test, but it did prove a point. Yeah, that was kind of rude. Uh, yeah. I, I feel bad for little Albert. Right? Me like, too. It's like Little House on the Prairie all over again. And right? Oh my gosh, that's so Like true. Charles would have kicked that guy's butt. I know. They would not have been oh, happy. Man. Okay. And there's operant conditioning. That's the second one type of learning in which the consequences of an organism's behavior determine whether the behavior will be repeated in the future. Operant conditioning. Let's learn more about that. All right, so we have the law of effect. Behaviors that are followed by a satisfying state of affairs tend to be repeated. So you want to tell us more about that? I can't that? remember right now. So let's keep reading and see if something. Okay. Oh, I know. This is a Skinner box where Skinner. if a rat presses on a lover and they get a food every time, they're, they're more likely, the law of effect, they're more likely to press on that lover more to get their snack. Oh. Uh, I need a lover that produces snacks. That right. Work. We need a snack lover. Mm -hmm. Did you know that behaviors that produce an unpleasant state of affairs are less likely to be repeated? So if he were to shock them every time they pressed on the lover, they are not so likely to continue to press the lover. It's all about that conditioning. Right. Let's talk about the Skinner box, actually, since we're already kind of talking about that. The operant behavior is the behavior that an organism produces that has some impact on the environment. All right, so reinforcement, any stimula a stimulus or event that increases the likelihood of a behavior. Right. Punishment would be any stimulus or event that decreases the likelihood of a behavior. And then there's four kind of areas, and this is something that you want to remember. They're not very easy, but they are four areas. So positive reinforcement or positive reward is something that is desirable is presented. You're adding something. So if it's positive, you're adding something. A negative reinforcement or negative reward is something undesirable is removed, or you're subtracting something. Then you have a positive punishment where something unpleasant is administered and then a negative punishment where something desirable is removed hmm. thank you so much bobo that was great oh that's awesome bobo wow and so this leads to schedules of reinforcement fixed interval uh basically that's where reinforcements are presented at fixed time periods g given that the op appropriate response is made Right. And then you want to do it right at the same time. If you wait too long, the person that did the good thing won't remember what you're giving them is for that good thing. Ah. Oh. Got to be timely. timely. A variable answer. interval is where the behavior is reinforced based on an average time expired since the last reinforcement. So. There's more about that with the schedules of reinforcement, where if you have a fixed ratio, it's the reinforcement delivered after a specific number of responses have been made. Kind of like if you buy five ice cream cones, you get one free. And then a variable mm -hmm. ratio that says it's based on a particular number of responses, like going to the slot machines and gambling. Mm. You're just going to keep putting in that token, right, until you, somebody drags you away from there. Well, now That's they have slips ratio. of paper now. I know it's they not the same, right? It is not the same. Oh. And then there's observational learning. Where that's where the learning takes place by watching the actions of others, where they learn based on their consequences or praises. So kind of like a creepy stalker. Like, you know, they're really observational learning instead of just stalking, so. Exactly. Yeah. They're watching your every move. Yeah. Uh, and then we have Albert Bandero and the Bobo doll. The Bobo doll. <laughs> That's her name. That, that, they did a study. That's they, where that came they from. They did. Oh, okay. And they found that children act aggressively after witnessing an, ad an adult being aggressive with the doll. But they weren't aggressive prior to seeing somebody else be aggressive. Oh, so why was the adult being aggressive with a doll? To see if they would mimic their every move. 
Uh-huh. And they did. They threw it up. They threw it against the wall. They hit it with a hammer. It was insulting to the, the Bobo doll, honestly. Wow. Yeah. Poor doll. I know, right? Well, that's it for the end of our radio hour. Sorry that's a little bit loud. Anyway, good day on the test. Have a great day.